join us in welcoming Chaplain Colonel Dr. Khaled Shabazz to this conversation. We at KSA and all of you as a listeners, thank you for your time, your wisdom, and the pearls you're going to drop. Folks, get your paper and paper, pencil ready for the notes. Let's go. Let's bring it. <laughs> that Welcome. That fired me up. You must have been talking about somebody else. <laughs> it's that guy behind you. It's the guy right behind you, Chaplain. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, listen, I'm so I so enjoyed to be here. Uh, honestly, uh, usually when I hear somebody talk about me, it brings me to tears because, uh, as you said, you know, my life started off in a mess uh, as a, it began in a bedroom at uh, 10 years old, being molested by a family friend. After that happened, because of the molestation, you know, this, this extroverted kid went inside of himself, shut off the world, and didn't really want to talk to anybody. Went to special education in the eighth grade, failed the ninth grade, failed the 12th grade and had to walk in summer school because I had this big body that God gave me, 6'5", 275 pounds of man. <laughs> <laughs> because I got this big body, of course, I was allowed to go to college and play a little ball. But when I was in college, because of the molestation, I was still struggling inside of myself. And what people don't understand, I was drinking myself to sleep at night. And any because also because of the molestation, anybody that I would see because I was struggling with my manhood, I didn't know whether I was a damn man or a woman. Right, right. I, everybody I saw that looked at me, I just wanted to beat them up. Right. Okay. And so I was constantly fighting, constantly in conflict because I was in conflict with myself. So right. it came to a head one night. People were tired of me bullying them and I got in a fight. I was uh, shot in the back, beat with a shovel, and almost lost my life. They sent me out to, they airlifted me out to what we call Tyler Medical Center. You would think an intelligent person at that time would come to his senses and say, okay, I need to change my life. But because we have this, this uh, intractable relationship with dysfunction in our community, I saw the young man six months later. And so mm. everybody was telling me, hey, be a man. You got to get him back. And so, of course, you know, we all have some friends from across the tracks. So I had a friend that gave me a sawed-off shotgun and a 45, and my mission was to go and kill this kid, right, oh. because I thought that's what manhood was. Yeah. But as God would have it, man, I'm just, this is going to get tough for me, okay? So we got you. We got you. I had, I had one guy who said to me, hey, man, you're going to let your mother down. You're oh. going to let your mother down. And that's yeah. all... The person in my life that I loved the most was my mother, and I didn't want to let her down. Yes. So I can't say that I didn't fight the kid. I got a crowbar, and I almost beat the kid to death, but I didn't shoot him, and I didn't kill him, which yes. spared my life. Yes. And so I went to jail uh, for a couple of weeks. After I was let out of jail, I was in the courtroom, and the lady was calling me all kind of names, thug, excrement. She called me... <laughs> the worst scum in the world and she, she said do you have anything to say for yourself i said yes ma'am you know this guy shot me i was defending myself what's interesting about that when you're talking about the justice system she called these people up and she said is that true why didn't you guys tell me why didn't you guys tell me that and so as god would have it they let me go that day yeah. so i went back to alexandria louisiana uh, I worked as a, a janitor and a cash slash cashier, and I decided, hey, listen, I want to come to the United States Army. I had a, a fiance and two kids up to that point, and I said, I want to come to the United States Army to clean up my life. Well, that was a great idea, but I still hadn't dealt with the molestation. I hadn't dealt with the trauma. I hadn't dealt with the drinking. So from 1991 to 1992, wasn't even a year, I had two Article 15s and was being chaptered out of the military. Mm. Well, the story doesn't stop there. I was doing extra duty, you know, and an hour away from suicide. I had already had a plan since I was a horrible father, uh, a, a, a deceitful husband, and a drunk. I said, well, you know, these people would be better without me. 
Right. And so I decided to end my life. And, and again, God intervened. He sent this man and he said, hey, young man, I want to talk to you. And I said, I just I don't really want to talk to anybody. I just want to finish my work and go home and do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And this, this guy, I want you guys to hear this. This is the power of words. He said five words that absolutely changed my life. I'm 27 years old. Okay. He said, I believe in you. Uh, Listen. Uh, Listen. Oh, man. I believe in you. Amen. Yes. 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 Five simple words. I believe in you. Yes. And because he believed in me that day, yes. I decided I was going to believe in myself and I was going to dedicate myself Yes. To make sure this man was proud of me. Yes. You know, you know, one thing that I believe about God, man, God sends people into your life at that exact moment when you think, <laughs> you think that it's over for you. He sends them at the right time because he needs you to listen. The relationship Please, with this man yes. helped me believe in myself. And I was in the, what we call the field in the military. I was in the field getting a little light discrimination because at this time I had changed my religion and changed my name and all this kind of stuff. And they were saying, oh, you must be joining on to the enemy or some foolishness at the time. And so I see the chaplain out in the distance. And I got to be honest with you. I say, if there is a God, (laughs) please don't send the chaplain over to talk to me. I don't want to talk to this guy. I got enough problems. But as God would have it, the chaplain came over and talked to me, brother and sisters, and he ministered me, ministered to me for an hour. Oh, he ministered to me for an hour, not on God, but on self-confidence and belief in yes. yourself. Yes. Amen. And he yes. said something to me. I have never received revelation. God has never spoken to me. But this man said something to me that I know and I believe it was from God. He said, why don't you become a chaplain to help people just like you? And I'm telling you, the lights went off, the the windows shut, everything (laughs) opened up in my life. And I knew right then what my purpose was. And so from that day, I tell you, when you you talked in the beginning, I dedicated myself to not only helping other human beings, but I dedicated myself to education. Mm. And from 25 straight years, I've been in school. And so that's where you have the two doctorate degrees, the four master's degrees. And oh, by the way, I just graduated from a fellowship in War College. Woo! All right, now, All right, now Air War College. You yes, go he will. And not many people get picked up for Air War College from the chaplain score. So that, that's, that's, yes. that's also a very big achievement right there. Yes. Absolutely. Getting, in, getting to the War College is like winning the lottery. And let me, let me mm. throw something on you. For because it's never happened in history for a Muslim chaplain to get to war college is like winning the lottery three times in a row. All right mm. now, all right, you all right see now. See what I'm saying? But all that right. is a product of changing your thinking to change to God's mindset yes. and mm. helping other human beings yes. paying it forward, and God paid it back to me. Won't yes. He do it? Yes, He will. 